Hi, I'm Jackson, and in this video, I wanted to show you real quick how you can get the most out of using FreeCodeCamp on your mobile phone. Now, I'm gonna be using a Samsung S20. Uh, obviously, this is an Android phone, but the things I'm gonna show you today do work equally well on Apple devices, and you just need to find a different app to be able to enable it, but there are plenty available. You just have to have a look and you'll be able to find them. The reason I'm making this is you may have noticed if you've tried using free code camp on your mobile that particularly inputting text into the code editor can be really tricky and that's not really the fault of the free code camp it's more to do with the way just uh, the phone keyboard is set up um, by default but the good news is there's a really easy fix we can use now i'm just going to pull it up on my phone and i'll quickly show you what i can see so if this is the first time you've looked at free code camp on the mobile before you may have realized that the layout's a little bit different um, in fact, we can see most of what we would normally have just in one screen is separated onto several tabs. So for example, we have the info, the code, tests, and preview. Now, all we're gonna need to look at very quickly today is the info and the code. The info essentially just gives you the task at hand that you're gonna need to do. So I'll just scroll to the bottom and I can see here that the activity I need to do is uh, the H1 element should have the text hello world in it. And then if I click on the code window to do this, uh, you can see I've already done that above. And um, so I filled this in using uh, the current keyboard. I'm just gonna delete this though because completing this task isn't the purpose of this video. Instead, I want you to watch very carefully what happens to the keyboard that I'm using as I type. Now the keyboard I'm using here is the Gboard, which is the Google board that's available in the Play Store. Uh, this one is not good for code editing. Uh, I prefer it to the Samsung um, kind of built-in native keyboard uh, just for my day-to-day -day use but that's not good for code editing either so I'll just give you an example of what I mean here um, you can see off the bat the first thing I need to type is an opening angle bracket and I can't access that easily from this keyboard you probably know how to do it it's not difficult but it's not easy so here we have um, I have to open up my uh, my number layer of the keyboard and then it's not on the number layer of the keyboard so then i have to find it on the symbols layer of the keyboard so it's already two key presses just to get to the key i need then i press the angle bracket to open and you would have noticed the keyboard there automatically shifted its state back to its uh, original position which in this case is fine because next i need an h then i need a one uh, this is available from the number layer so i can do this and then I need to have my closing angle bracket. So again, it's two key presses with the number key, the symbol key, and then my closing angle bracket. From here, I can just type the rest of the activity, if I could spell it correctly. So you'll notice here, I'm even trying to capitalize and it won't let me because it's deciding it knows better than me. So I'm just gonna write hello world, and then I'm gonna choose the uh, spell correct to Get the right one this is even glitchier than uh, more glitchy than usual which is good for the video obviously even if it is frustrating uh, then i need my closing bracket so i'm just going to type this without narrating the whole experience but just watch what happens to the keyboard as i try and do this as someone who's done this many times already as well There we go. Um, that took me longer than I would like, really, considering I was just writing, you know, four or five characters there. Now this is doable, but it gets very frustrating, particularly as you do the later activities and you need to write a lot of code on your phone. What's the uh, way we can improve this? Well, as I intimated, there are different keyboards that are available for your device. I'm just gonna show you the one I like to use myself. So here we have um, Codeboard Keyboard uh, by Gaz Laws. There are lots of these different keyboards and lots of these apps. Uh, feel free to try a few. I have tried quite a lot of them and this is the one I prefer by far, but obviously my taste may vary to yours. Try them out for yourself. Once we've installed that, you can access it through, I just need to bring my screen back up, uh, one of two ways. You probably have um, down in the uh, bottom right-hand corner, your little keyboard switch, or you can long press your space bar and depending on the way you've got your phone set up or depending on your operating system, uh, that might bring up the option for you. So in this case, I'm just gonna use the button that's provided and we're gonna select our code board English. And when that pops up, you can see that uh, I have a very different 
um, keyboard straight away. It's visually very different. This has a dark theme. It doesn't have to. You can actually make it a light theme if you prefer. But you can see the options I already have for the keys that are available to me on that first layer of keyboard are exactly the kinds of keys I need ready access to as a programmer. So if we look at our top row, we can see all of our numbers. We've got the at symbol and we've got parentheses. The next layer, we have uh, all of our mathematical operations and we also have some curly braces, some square brackets. Uh, then we've got our regular keys. And then on the bottom layer, we also have uh, the pipe operator, which is very useful if you're doing shell scripting on your phone. Uh, and we've also got our angle brackets and uh, you know our semicolons and other things. There is another layer to this, which I'll show you in a moment, but just to show you mu how much easier it is using this, uh, let's just delete what we currently have. And now if I wanna type that H1 Hello World um, example again, I can do this without having to shift the context of my keyboard at all. Uh, of course, I made a small typo because you can't do anything on a video while you're recording without making a mistake. But here you see how much easier that was for me. If you were watching the keyboard the whole time and if you weren't paying attention, you can just have a look at that again. It doesn't jump around at all. It doesn't change state at all. And in fact, it behaves exactly the way I expect it to behave as a keyboard. This is such a time saver when it comes to doing this kind of work on your phone. Now, this comes with a huge caveat, of course, it's not ideal writing code on your phone, but if you're in a position where you absolutely have to, one of these keyboards makes it infinitely easier than relying on the native ones provided by your device. Now I said I'd tell you what was on the uh, second layer of this uh, keyboard, and I'll do that now. Uh, we have a symbol key uh, on the top row, the, the most top row. Uh, I kind of skipped over it before when I was talking about the top row. Uh, and if I click on this, uh, we've got some extra symbols that we can see like the tilde and the <coughs> And the back tick, some currencies, that kind of thing. We also have some other shortcuts like and some text snippets for, uh, for example, a for loop. We actually get a template for a for loop. And then the next row, we have things like cut, copy, paste, undo, and redo. These are extremely useful when you start doing um, more complicated coding on your phone if that's something that interests you. So I can't recommend enough getting your hands on one of these keyboards. Even if you don't think you're gonna use the Free Code Camp mobile editor, it's useful to have on your phone just in case you find yourself in a situation where you're whipping up a quick code snippet, either in a forum or something like that. It's just such a useful thing to have. Well, that's everything from me for today. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you have, I'd appreciate a quick like, comment, or subscribe. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.